Welcome to episode 166 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsberg, and this is a special episode with special guest, Mr. Mike Potter from MacStock for Mac Guys Only. How are you doing, Mike? I am doing great, Dave. Not only is it a special episode, but a special guest as well. That's awesome. You are a special guest. It's been a while. I think the last time we were together, I mean, it was uh, pre-pandemic, and so 2019, I think, was our last episode, but uh, we've been uh, doing Mac Stock. Uh, we did it virtually last year, and we'll be talking about that just a bit here. Uh, we're actually coming to you from McHenry County, Illinois, which is uh, down the street a little bit from Mac Stock headquarters in Woodstock, actually. Uh, we're in a town, uh, Wonder Lake. We're looking at a beautiful lake view right now, and I see our boat. And uh, uh, yeah, it's it's it's. I thought it'd be a nice little atmosphere to enjoy uh, all the uh, uh, the beautiful weather we're having today, and uh, and talk about technology, Apple, and uh, especially Mac Stock. I, I was going to ask if you were going to tell them where we were sitting, because this is a gorgeous setting, Dave. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it reminds me very much of the episode we recorded downtown Chicago, right. except. A heck of a lot quieter. A lot quieter. But, uh, well, well, we'll see as the show goes on here. We might get some dog barking and some boats going by. and Get a few water skiers. A few water skiers, which we just had if we want to go by here. So, But uh, hopefully the recording will keep it a little relatively quiet, but you'll get you'll understand. What, that's why we're doing here. So, But, uh, yeah, it's it's a beautiful day and then beautiful time to talk about technology. But uh, maybe probably one of the primary reasons why I wanted you to come out, because uh, uh, we have Mac stock virtual Mac stock 21 2021 coming up here is September 25th uh, this uh, as we record this a couple weeks away and um, I wanted to kind of you and you and I are both wearing our Mac stock t-shirts I, I wore 2015 and you wore 2018 I so, wore 2018 yes I, I have them all of course since I've been to every single one and spoken to every single one that was at least in person that is uh, but uh, let's talk a little bit about the history of Mac stock well we, we have started I mean I think we first met and it was uh, probably on, on a on a whim here, I think I reached out to you as I was still, as I'm st still working with the uh, Suburban Chicago Apple users, and uh, reached out to you and wanted to hook up and and f find out more about MacStock, and uh, and I think uh, the rest was history. We when we became pretty fast friends, if I remember correctly. I don't know if you if you remember that encounter, but I mean, I know we went out to lunch. <laughs> You know, the funny thing is, I don't remember that. I feel like we've been friends much longer yeah. than the history of MacStock. Yeah, it's been. Uh, so it really, it, you know, that whole 20, so we just met in 2015, really? I believe so, yeah. Wow. I believe, if I remember correctly. Wow. Yeah, no, I do remember going out to lunch, though, with you for the very and, first and, time. And we discussed it, and, and you said, hey, you want to speak? I said, uh, yeah, I'm honored. <laughs> so... Yeah, I, I, it's it's pretty hard for me not to remember twenty the twenty fifteen edition because I was uh, I felt out of place at first. I wasn't a podcaster back then, and then be, and became one shortly thereafter. So, um, but uh, that was uh, that was probably one of the more, one of the more fun events that we had at that very first one with with Barry's uh, barbecue at his house, and then we had uh, then we had the event at, at a very short I think it was like eight to ten weeks that you put that together and. Uh, um, and that it was a it was a pretty amazing event in 2015. Well, Barry Barry is the grease on so many wheels. Yes, and he, is. <laughs> he certainly was for the first Mac stock. Uh, probably was a catalyst for getting us together too. Uh huh. Um, it was actually so the history. Uh, the history of Mac stock goes back to 2009. Uh, that was yep. when I first registered the domain name for it. That oh, was when okay. I had the idea for something that would be MacStock. And the funny thing is, at that time, I really didn't expect it to be any more than a meetup for the folks who listen to my podcast. That was the intention. And when... Uh, I, I wanted to, to bounce this idea off of someone, and it was it was Barry I bounced that idea off of, and we met at a Starbucks, as you might expect. <laughs> and uh, it, we talked about it. I presented the idea. I told him what I was interested. I told him who I was interested in um, possibly having as presenters, which if you go back to my original notes, you'll see that many of those folks that I, I had my site set on yep. in 2009 – ended up speaking at the first Mac stock yep. or a subsequent Mac stock. There's still a couple on that list. I'm, um, I'm actually hoping to reach out to one this weekend, this holiday weekend when I had a little time to do so. Okay. 
Um, but there, there are a couple folks in that list I really wanted to speak, and gosh darn if most of them didn't end up speaking at MaxDoc at some point in time over the past five years. Um, but we discussed the idea, didn't really do a whole lot with it. Uh, I had gone to a couple other smaller conferences in the years subsequent to that, and then in 2015, I think it was January 2015, I believe, um, we got word that Macworld San Francisco was canceled. And, you know, it, not only did it crush Barry, but it crushed so many people in the Apple community because that was a place where we got that opportunity to get together and see our friends, even if it was just once a year. And so I remember Barry saying, gosh darn it, I still want to see my friends. Even if there is no Macworld San Francisco, I want to see my friends. Yeah. And he decided to throw a barbecue in his backyard. Cool, right? But then he invites people from not only all over the country, but literally around the world to come out to this barbecue. And he ended up with, I think, about 100 people he had signed up to come to this barbecue. And when he told me about it, I said, Barry, you know what you've got there, don't you? And he said, what? I said, you, <laughs> you've got a potential speaker list and attendee list for the very first Mac stock. Yep. What do you think? And so what we agreed to do at that point was he was going to do the barbecue, I was going to do the, do the Mac stock. Um, and in about, about six, eight weeks, something like that, we threw it all together. And uh, gosh darn, if people didn't come up and ask me at the end of it when the next one was going to be. So yep. I knew I was kind of on the hook for future Mac stocks at that point. Absolutely. And, uh, and it continued to evolve uh, and many years after that. So 2019 was the last uh, of the in-person event, obviously, because of the pandemic uh, hitting us in 2020. Uh, we had so much fun, so much, so many memories, so many great things that happened. A lot of great speakers, and, and it continues to this day that that everybody talks about it, and we 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 loved it. And then, and of course, with 2020, we had to do a virtual Mac stock, and that uh, actually turned out pretty gosh darn good for for considering what you had to 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 put together to get it to get it to work. It did turn out good. Uh, I was very very happy with the results, especially considering. Uh, I think just four weeks prior to it, I didn't know how the heck I was going to pull it off. Uh, and uh, you, in fact, were the person who kept poking me every couple weeks <laughs> before that saying, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And uh, I said, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Uh, but it came together pretty nicely, I think. And uh, we had a little, little kind of virtual lounge for people to hang out. We had the live stream on YouTube. We had the yep. chat in YouTube. Uh, and we had a way for the speakers to all come in and join us live, even though we had pre-recorded their conversations. So, uh, yeah, it turned out to be a pretty good day. It was a long day, but at the end of it, it felt like it could have gone on even longer. Could have, yeah. Yeah, and I think that was probably part of the reason that I wanted to do something a little extra with Virtual Mac Stock this year. And when things were looking better back in... I guess it was June of this summer. Things were looking a little bit better. Things were trending in the right direction. Yep. I said, well, what if, what if I have a small in-person audience who can sit there and participate in the event live, you know, watch, watch the recording, watch the, the uh, actual broadcast of it uh, live as the day goes on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's where I created the VIP pass. Yeah. So uh, it's a, a very small um, group of people out of necessity. Uh, originally it was 60, and then in the weeks uh, since then, I've had to reduce the capacity a, cu a couple times. Um, but, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's an opportunity for a few folks to come in, and um, I, I, I imagine local, you know, yeah. folks from the local area, to come in and kind of sit in and get together with a few of their Mac stock friends for, if if for nothing more than a day. Um, now, I did want to plus that a little bit for the folks who are making the trek. We do have some folks who are coming further than the northern Illinois area. Right. So I did want to kind of plus it a little bit. So I think we're going to get together for dinner that night. And then yep. uh, we have some plans for a small um, Mac stock picnic on Sunday, That's gonna be which fun. I think is going to be a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, even if uh, a lot of folks are going to have to, you know, get on their plane and head home Sunday. But for those who can stick around and uh, uh, take part, I think it's going to be a, a fun 
last hurrah for Virtual Max Doc Weekend yes. before everyone has to go home and we start preparing, fingers crossed, for Max Doc 2022. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You, you got some some great speakers uh, that are uh, lined up. Uh, you've got that on the website. We've uh, you lined up uh, quite a few, uh, and all the speakers are going to be virtual, I believe. Is that the case? Uh, are you going to? They're going to be pre-recorded. I, uh, yeah, uh, at least five are going to be pre-recorded. Now, at the moment, uh, Mike Schmitz is uh, has said he's going to come in and present live. Now he's just. Wisconsin. He's practically just across the border yeah. uh, in Wisconsin, so uh, he's going to come down for it. Uh, Woodstock, for those who don't know, is only about 30 minutes south of Wisconsin, right? Uh, and Mike is not that much further north from there. Um, but he, he's planning on coming down. Now, I have been reaching out to everybody, uh, checking their comfort levels sure. uh, to make sure everyone's okay coming in. I reached out to each of the attendees who signed up for a VIP pass individually, check their comfort levels, you know, um, see what I can do to make it a, a better experience for everyone uh, during, during COVID, uh, and have had positive responses from everyone, including uh, lists of things that they are doing themselves to help keep themselves safe as they travel in for MacStock that weekend. That's great. Uh, so I was very happy to see that a lot of those things on the list are things I'm doing already. Right. Uh, but we're doing everything we possibly can to uh, keep everybody safe. Yeah, let uh, you know, allow everybody to have a good time. Right. Get together, but still do it safely. Be, be safe. Uh, yeah. And I'm with you. I, I mean, there's been events I've been invited to, and I, I went to one recently, and um, I was not comfortable. I mean, I stayed for a little bit, and then I left. I just, yeah. It's just not when people are in a room and they don't have the mask. But we don't want to go all that down that whole thing with that, but. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad you're keeping it safe, and uh, you've got some help. I mean, I appreciate you uh, inviting me on as uh, as a co-host of, of, of Virtual Max Talk 2021. I'm more than happy to help you and help you along, and we've got a, f a few friends coming along the way, too, to help out, I believe. Uh, well, you were such a phenomenal co-host last year. <laughs> How could I pass up the opportunity to have you yeah, a co-host again this year? Uh, it, it certainly would not have been possible last year without you, and, and I'm Thanks. so glad that you can do it again this year. Absolutely. Uh, and, yeah, uh, we do have some other special guests coming in. Uh, Chuck Joyner is coming in, and Guy Searle is coming in. Great. So uh, Our good friends. Yeah, all, all three of you are going to be there to help out in whatever way you can. Yep. Um, I should probably mention everybody else who's presenting. I mentioned Mike Schmitz, who's, yep. um, I believe, going to come down and present in person, although we still have that opportunity for him to record if he wants to. Sure. Uh, Rick Cartwright has already sent me his presentation. It's it's great. I love he, it. He's awesome. He, he did a really good job with it. Uh, Wally and I are going to talk about the the next Max Doc Film Fest as well as a virtual event that he put on and what they went through to uh, you know do that event. Um, Kelly is is keep Kelly Gumont is keeping her presentation under wraps so far. I don't have all the details on <laughs> Sounds hers like Kelly. yet. <laughs> so we know Kelly; she's always been on our show. <laughs> <laughs> um, Allison Sheridan is going to be uh, uh, recording a presentation very much in the style that we did last year, that interview style, that kind of I was calling it the virtual Max Doc style presentation. Uh, we're we're going to just be sitting and and chatting about uh, automation and her foray into automation uh, uh, these past few months. And then uh, Brett Terpstra is going to be joining us as well. And, uh, uh, and Brett Terpstra is going to be joining us, and he is actually going to be talking about his app, Bunch, nice. which is yeah. uh, also an automation app. Uh, automation is one of those things that MaxDoc attendees just can't get enough of. And uh, I did a little playing around with Bunch, and I'm excited to hear what yeah. he has to share on that as well. So we have a really nice lineup of presenters. Uh, we're going to be running from 11 o'clock Central Time until 5 p.m. Central Time. We'll have a couple breaks in there. And the final hour is also going to be reserved for Q&A. So anyone who has questions for our presenters or just questions in general about MaxDoc or whatever, uh, you will be interacting with them in the chat room and whatnot and collecting those questions. And uh, we'll wrap up at 5 o'clock that day. So, All right. Well, um, uh, fun time. Towards the end of the show, we'll talk about how... Uh uh, how you can, can sign up and uh, go through all that. Uh, so I just wanted to do a, do a quick intro of Mac stock and why you're here and why we're doing this. And 
But uh, let's uh, move on and talk a little bit about, about some te technology things uh, beyond getting getting Max Stock going and learning more stuff from there. Um, last time you were on, we talked about browsers, and um, I thought this would be a good segue <laughs> here uh, yeah. to to uh, talk about it. And I remember the last time you that you talked to us that that you still re you were using Firefox as your default iOS browser. Is that still the case? Yeah, Firefox is my default browser on the Mac. Windows when I have to use it, Linux when I do use it, and on iOS too. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, since then, how has it uh, been working for you? you you've got, are you are you happy with its results? I mean, I know the sync, the syncing tool is really good. I know do you use that. Do you, do you, the syncing tool is the primary reason I use it. Okay. Uh, uh, Firefox is just amazing when it comes to syncing. Uh, you know, as, as so many people did, I was using Chrome for a while because it had that syncing capability right. uh, built into the browser via your Google account, but it kept suspending the sync, or it would fail the, the sync, or you'd have to sign out and sign back in. It just became such a pain to maintain that syncing feature. When it did work, it was great. When it didn't work, it was frustrating. Yep. And I thought I had nailed it down to being the fact that I have multiple Google accounts and that that was causing some sort of confusion for the syncing. But then more and more of my clients started reaching out to me and saying that their syncing in Chrome was being suspended or mm -hmm. was not working properly or had signed them out. The exact same problems I was having. And they only have one account. Mm -hmm. So that blew that theory. Uh, it, it just came down to Chrome syncing stinks. I mean, that's really yeah. what it came down to. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, when it works, it was great. But unfortunately for me, the majority of the time it didn't work. And that, that was uh, very sad. Now, Firefox has always been my primary browser. Mine but too. when they built a, a robust, reliable syncing into it that allowed it to, uh, allowed me to reliably sync my history, my settings, uh, uh, my tabs, if I wanted to, yeah. uh, from my desktop to my mobile to my other desktop to my other mobile to my laptop, you know, when when they launched that and I tried it for the first time, it solved all those problems. And I just knew that Firefox would have to be my default. And then, of course, when they released it for iOS, I hopped on it right away. Now, what made this a much better experience is when Apple allowed me to set Firefox as my default. Yep, that was my uh, say. And that was what about a year ago or so, something like that. And about a year, maybe a little, little long, little less, a little and longer. Even even though I had been using it much longer than that, that was really, uh, that was really the thing that made it a completely seamless experience. Uh, you know, versus having to pointedly go select Firefox each time or have links accidentally open in Safari or whatnot. Now they open in Firefox like they should, right. and I, I just love it. And the feature, you know, as so many people do, I do a lot of my news browsing on the phone or I do a lot of it on my, on my iPad, yep. but sometimes I want to read an article later or it's an article that's important f for, you know, work-related things. I love the share... So you, obviously you can you can share, but one of the things about sharing a link to Firefox is you can tell it to send that link to a specific device or to multiple devices. And so I'll very often come up across an article in Flipboard, click share, send it to Firefox, and send it to my desktop at the office or send it to my desktop downstairs where it's much more relevant and uh, it, much more useful to me when I read that article. Uh, so I absolutely love that feature. Mm -hmm. And on the desktop, you you can't you, you if you haven't used it, if you haven't used it, you need to use the screenshot feature of Firefox. I used to use a third party uh, tool for doing screenshots of websites. Mm -hmm. uh, more often than not, you know, if you do if you do uh, Command Shift Four and you highlight on your screen, or Command Shift Four Space, which is all built into Mac OS, and you're doing a screenshot of your desktop, you're only going to get what's on your screen. But when you have a website with a lot of information below the fold, as it were, the screenshot feature of Firefox that allows you to capture that entire page from top to bottom and save it to your downloads folder yep. in one motion is just 
amazing. Uh, I, I love that. Uh, but then, you know, to take a cue from Apple, something that Firefox has always been on top of is privacy. Yep. Uh, Firefox is, uh, you know, one of the leaders in privacy protection right alongside Apple, I'd say, uh, and if not better in, in some ways. Uh, but I, I really do love the privacy features of Firefox, and uh, those privacy features are carried over from the desktop to iOS, and uh, it's just one of those things that keeps me going back to it. Plus, I love to support the open source community, too. Yeah, no, and, and and Mozilla has done a really good job in the open source community. That they've they've uh, had this browser going for a long time. Um, it's getting a little competition though, because Microsoft. Have, of course, we don't like Microsoft as much, but Microsoft Edge is becoming a uh, you know a worthy competitor. Uh, I I know you haven't used it much, but uh, I mean I, I use it. Um, oh, I used it enough. I don't use it on my Macs though. Yeah, uh, uh, it's Chromium. It's, it's Chromium it's, base. It's and, and, essentially Chrome. But. You know, as everybody's complaining about how much bloated Chrome, Google Chrome is, uh, I think Microsoft has done a good job of, of uh, really bringing the bloat down, and um, and it works really well. Uh, works really well in the enterprise too, because the enterprise is happy with it. Because uh, I can say that firsthand, working for, at my at my company, because uh, the security is very is very good with that. So they can keep it within the boundaries of of the of the corporate the corporate network because uh, it, it is able to be locked through, you know, uh, through the office, so through Azure and then through Office 365. Um, but the browser itself is for anybody who's listening is, you know, I think that's a, it's a worthy competitor at this point. I, I never thought I'd be putting Microsoft up there near, because <laughs> Google Chrome was always the, the browser that everybody was using for a long time. And, and they still are, uh, but I think people are starting to to wander away from Google Chrome a little more. I have not seen this so much on the Mac, but you know, a number of my clients do run Windows, and right. the the common denominator between running Chrome and getting adware on their Windows computer is almost undeniable. Yeah, uh, I don't see that anywhere near as much when they're using Firefox or Edge right. or Opera. Safari's gone on Windows now, but any other browser than Chrome, for for some reason I can't possibly right. explain. Chrome more than anything allows this malicious adware to get on people's computers, uh, and and doesn't seem to be doing anything to block it. Whereas you you go to many of these same websites in Firefox or Edge or what have you, and you're you're not getting the same stuff installed, or you're getting the appropriate warnings thrown up in front of you to say, hey. If you let this on your system, some not so nice things may happen. Right, uh, and and that doesn't seem to happen in Chrome, and it's one of the reasons I've been telling my clients to avoid it and to switch to Edge on Windows for sur for sure. Oh, for sure. You know, and I and I see that uh, uh, I see that all the time with uh, with with it, and especially like you said in uh, uh, in in the Windows world. Um, so. Uh, to, just to mention, when you talked about setting the default browser app, um, you can go into each one of the browsers that you have installed um, in the settings in iOS, and it gives you the option where it says default browser. You tap that, and it'll give you the list. Uh, I've, I've talked about this before, of which browser you choose to be your default. So it doesn't right. have to be Safari anymore, and that was, was was a great thing about it. They did that with Mail, too. So uh, so if, if you know, I've got Chrome Edge, Safari, Firefox, Bra Brave, DuckDuckGo is another one that's that's becoming, Duck, a, Duck, Go, it's sure. becoming a worthy competitor now. Uh, you might want to check out as well. But you can have anyone and or all these browsers on there, and if you so choose, you want to try it being a default, uh, your default. It's going to open up everything in that browser now. It's not you know, back in the old days of iOS where Safari was it. You didn't have a choice and. And when when these browser uh, when these browser developers were were putting them together on iOS, they didn't have a choice. That the Safari was always the back end of of a browser. Um, so I think Apple is doing a lot better when when it comes to browsing uh, by allowing uh, you to choose what browser you want to use. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, though. Don't all browsers still need to use Apple's WebKit? I believe they still have to use the WebKit part of it, but I think, but they've, they, they, I think they've removed a little. It's, it's not as grasp. Maybe I could be wrong. Not as restrictive. I, I don't think it's as restrictive as it used to be. Yeah. That that I believe that they are able to allow because you know, Apple wouldn't have allowed uh, 
it to be, to be default. But again, you can't any you know your Joe Schmo browser. They're not Apple's not going to just allow you to be that that browser to become a default. You have to be certified with Apple. And so any browsers that you go out there, I mean, I know we've named the top five or six that are out there now. There are many others that are out there that uh, um, uh, are also worthy competitors, but they have to work with Apple to get certified uh, and for them to allow the fact that it can be a default browser. I, You know, I will say I am disappointed that Opera does not have a great presence on iOS. Uh, yeah. My secondary browser used to be Chrome. I think I implied Chrome was my primary browser. It never was. Firefox has always been my primary browser. Um, Chrome used to be my secondary browser, but when I gave up Chrome, I needed a browser that was Chromium-based. And after a lot of searching, I ended up with Opera on the Mac. And I've been very, very happy with it. And one of the features I do like about it is the built-in VPN feature. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you know, you have to trust it is Opera's VPN. You have to trust that they're going to keep your information secure and whatnot but in my testing it seems to be pretty good um, but more often than not the uh, uh, private browsing and or VPN features are used mostly when I need to log into a non-primary account or something right. like that and I don't want my my saved account information to pop up uh, or from logging into one of my clients' websites, or you know, any, anything like that, is when I use private browsing or I use the VPN. Um, but I am disappointed that Opera doesn't have a, a better presence on iOS, and that is where Edge excels. Is they do have a version of Edge for iOS, and so you can take advantage of the syncing feature to get everything uh, from one device to the other. Absolutely. Um, and I, you know, I don't know. I think they might if Edge has a version for Linux. Um, I don't know. Chrome for Linux. But would, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Firefox. Microsoft has been very well open with, with working with Linux, uh, especially with Office. Yeah. So. Well, that's something that Microsoft has done really, really well under their new leadership. I mean, if you, if you think back to the bad old days of Microsoft versus Apple or what right. have you, um, if, if that's where your mind is stuck, it's hard to imagine saying that Microsoft is doing good things the, these days, but they really are. The new leadership at Microsoft is embracing open source. They're embracing mm -hmm. the different platforms uh, that they, they launched Edge for Mac and Windows and iOS and, and, and Android, I yeah. believe. Um, it, it, it says a lot for them. And, and you know, the... Mac Office, the Mac Boo, they used to call it, the, the, the Mac business unit, used to be kind of isolated. And, and when a new version of Office for the Mac came out, it always came out months after the latest Windows version came out. And that's right. because the Mac Boo, the Mac business unit, didn't have access to what the Windows business unit was doing. Right. Yeah. And they do now. <laughs> they, and they do now. Uh, but it, that's why the Mac version always felt a little different. It yeah. wasn't fully compatible. When they brought those units together and they started co-developing, oh, my gosh, Office just really took off for the Mac yep. and became a much, much better product. Uh, so I, I'm just thrilled with what Microsoft is doing, not only for putting Office out there on the web, putting it out there on the Mac, on iOS, on Android, on Windows, uh, and that allows folks who are using Linux as their desktop to run it as well. And I just think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. So that's our, 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 our spin on the browsers. I think it's uh, good to know uh, that you have alternatives. And I think especially for iOS and iPadOS for that matter. I mean, your iPad is, is going to get a much better experience with, with Firefox with a bigger screen. Um, so check out both and uh, I have links in the show notes for all the browsers uh, that are out there I, th I put the I put the top five um, actually I'll put DuckDuckGo in there as well the top six um, uh, that are that are out there now and you should check them out yeah if you're using Safari exclusively on iOS or iPad OS get give Firefox a try yeah uh, you know you mentioned tabs tab management on Firefox is so much better than on Safari I agree uh, it's it's Funny, but Safari has really... I use it for one thing. Guess what I use it for? What's that? iCloud. Oh, okay. iCloud.com. Yeah. That's it. That's what I use Safari for. 
Not that it doesn't work under Firefox. It works great in Firefox. Yeah. But it, it goes to that separation of accounts thing. And I, if I'm going to use iCloud, I use it in Safari, and <laughs> that's about it. Uh, everything else is done in Firefox or Opera as, as my secondary browser. Yep. Um, you mentioned Flipboard, and I have been blind to Flipboard for some reason. I knew Flipboard was a great service and a great way to find information. Um, and I just have rediscovered it within the last few weeks. And oh, really? We now, in touch with iOS, now has a magazine that I've created. Oh, excellent. Uh, so you can, uh, if you, I'll have a link in the show notes. Uh, you can go to I in touch with iOS's uh, magazine. I'm flipping tons of articles that we usually refer to when we discuss as, as whatever we've talked about today is going to be in there. Uh, go out there and follow it because I think it's a great thing to, to, to get information. I mean, our, our friend Chuck Joyner does one for Mac Voices as well. Yep. And we got there's so much resources. I just I was just so blind of it and realizing how how important Flipboard is because there's so much information there. It's so much easier to get to it by other than me using a, a news aggregator like an RSS reader and things like that. Um, and so you mentioned I want to ask uh, how are you using it? Are you using it on on your iPhone and uh, or or even your iPad for that matter? Flipboard. Yeah. Uh, I use it on both the iPad and the phone. Now I I will say in recent weeks I don't know if it's a problem with Flipboard or if it's a problem with iPad OS. I don't have this problem quite so much on the phone, but on the iPad, I'm running into massive slowdowns using Flipboard, and I really think it's the ads. It's all the ads on these websites. When you click on a news link. Yeah, the specific website. You, you, yeah. you know, the specific website has a bunch of ads Mac on it. Macworld. <laughs> Macworld, yeah. That's a, that's a notorious example. Oh, yeah. by the way, Opera has phenomenal ad blocking. Yeah. Uh, much, much better than any other browser. Firefox gets good ad blocking when you install a, a third-party add-on or third-party extension, but Opera's built-in ad blocking is great. Yep. If you go to a website where there, it's just chock full of ads, check it out in Opera. Now, back to Flipboard. The trick there, if you can get it to work, it doesn't work on every website, right. is to tap the little reader view button. Mm, right. So when the site first loads, if it's one of those sites that's causing all kinds of problems because of the ads they inundate you with right uh especially those auto playing video ads mm -hmm. oh uh, tap that little reader view button and it'll switch to a reader view which i noticed on the iphone now has uh it's like tabs at the top of flipboard in the iphone and you can flip between them really quickly uh the ipad i have not seen that on yet but i've had these massive slowdowns and i think it's that uh, but what do i use it for well i do have uh uh tech news uh, that I flip articles yep. into. A second um, I have science news that I flip articles into, and I actually have one for, for Mac Eyes Only as well that yeah. I flip you know, Mac or Apple-related news into, too. Um, and I either get that out of my, the news I flip in there, I either get out of my general feed, I send to it from my browser, which you can do. You can tap yep. the share button and send it straight to Flipboard and to, what do they call them, uh, news... The new news readers? Um, no, what do they call the little um, uh, things you flip your articles into in Flipboard? <laughs> um, it it just it flips it into the magazine, or if, or it flips it into your you have magazines. They call them yeah, magazines. magazines, right? right. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, that's all right. It's like the little Flipboardy thingy that you flip them into. Yeah. You know that in touch with iOS magazine. In I've touch with iOS magazine. Lot, yeah, lots of. Uh, Lots of uh, articles in there now. Yeah, I do. I do follow Mac Voices uh, magazine. I'll follow yours now too. I didn't realize you had one. I, um, I just kind of haven't really made an official announcement of it yet, but I put, I've had put in some links in the show notes. So. And I do follow a general uh, technology news one yes, as well. Yeah, I do as well. And so when and I Apple. see something that's of interest, I'll I'll flip it into uh, either the Mac Guys Only magazine yeah. or the Tech News magazine or something like that. Um. And then, you know, the nice thing about Flipboard is that you can have some private magazines as well. Yep. Uh, and I, I, there are a number of articles that, I, I have a magazine called Cool Stuff. Right. It's not anything I necessarily need to flip into my technology news or that I need to fit, flip into uh, for Mac has only or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just something I want to reference later. And so I'll flip that into uh, Cool News. I have another one called Neat Projects. So if it's just a, a neat little project that someone's doing, a lot of maker stuff, yep. I'll flip it into there. Um, but I do have interesting science, interesting tech, 
interesting destinations, and, and I have um, FMEO Apple News. So and, those and that's are the, what's great about Flipboard. You can you can customize it to what you want to see. Apple News uh, News Plus is you know granted they they've done a good good uh, uh, way they've got that set up, but you can't customize it anywhere near as much as you can with Flipboard. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm a subscriber to Apple News Plus as part of my Apple One bundle, and I tried to go spend some time in there. And and, and you you can add you know things that are in there, but it seems like it always the the top news is always going to be the filter first filter before you get to what you really want to see. And that's how I've liked to have my news customized because I'm I'm focused on technology like you are. So that's what I'd like to see. So. Um, that's good to know, but uh, I'll, like I said, we'll have a show. We'll have a link in the show notes for the magazine that we've uh, that I've created from for in touch with iOS, uh, as well as uh, others uh, about Flipboard, uh, and uh, definitely want to check it out. So, um, our topic I want to talk about here is um, the wallet on iOS. That's become a uh, uh, become a way to store your credit cards, your loyalty cards, um, all all those things in. They, we did talk about this last week. Uh, you know, now they're introduced, going to be introducing a digital ID for driver's licenses. Now, yeah. of course, in Illinois, they're not going to be anywhere near the technology as we know how how, how our state is when it comes to I don't technology. See it coming here anytime, anytime soon. Anytime yeah. soon. Um, uh, Joanna Stern had a, a really interesting article in the Wall Street Journal. I'm going to have a link to in the show notes about, but I, I wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit of what how how you use uh, the wallet or do you use the wallet at all? Uh, I'm. I'm I'm not going to expose the contents of my phone to someone who needs to see my driver's license. Right. Just not going to do it. But that's essentially what you're doing. Right. Now, if there's a way to display the license without unlocking the phone, without exposing any other information, I have not seen that yet. Totally. Uh, yeah. Apple seems to hint that there there may be a way to do that. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Uh, in fact, the, the one quick trick, you know, you can just flip the sleep button and your phone will get to the point where you tap in your pin code or your right. touch ID or your face ID and, and it's unlocked again. But if you press and hold the power button and you get that slide to power off thing, right. the second you get slide to power off, even if you don't power it off, it requires a pin code. Right. It will not work with touch ID or face ID at that point. It requires the pin code. Uh, and that's a big difference between mm -hmm. what you can be compelled to give up and what you can't be compelled to give up right. when uh, unlocking your phone. So that's something good to know. Um, but uh, back to that, what do I keep in there? Well, I do keep um, two credit cards in there. Yep. Uh, I do not keep my business card in there because my bank won't allow it to be saved mm. in Apple Wallet. Uh, it's just not a feature they've enabled. Uh, but my major credit cards are in sure. there, um, not only because of the whole uh, you know, push to touchless payment in the last year and a half or so, um, but because Apple Pay is just so gosh darn convenient. It is. Um, Even with the Apple Watch, too. <laughs> Apple Watch. or I, I always use the phone for it, but yeah. um, I, I do keep the cards in there, and I do touchless payments at the gas station. I do touchless payments, any and, and most small businesses. Any small business that has Square or any of the other right. um, uh, small business focused point of sale systems will more often than not accept Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, and Google Pay. Right. Uh, so I I use them there when I can. Uh, any any chance I get to avoid sliding it or chipping it, I will take. Me too. Uh, I don't remember last time I used a card. I mean, I when I'm buying stuff, I'm always going up to the terminal. I'm either using my phone or my watch. It, there are a number of um, NFC terminals that just won't take Apple Pay. Yeah. It, it just doesn't work. And Most it, places it, I've gone to, it's been okay. But It does surprise me when that happens, we, but it does. Uh, and I've even gotten to the point where uh, we have on, on vacations had our credit card number swiped hmm. a couple times within a single year we we travel by car sure undoubtedly at gas stations yeah those those so skimmers. when that happened when that happened the second time i purposely sought out uh apps from gas companies right is that the right term yeah. gas companies it doesn't sound uh, right oil companies probably. oil companies <laughs> 
<laughs> that work with Apple Pay. Right. And the the one that works the best with it is mobile, mobile Exxon. Yeah. I've been use them and uh was it Shell's pretty good. Shell is pretty good. BP is horrible. Yeah. Uh they do not support Apple Pay. Uh last time I checked they don't support Apple Pay. No, they don't. Oddly they support PayPal, <laughs> which is very, very strange to me. Yeah. Why would you put someone through yeah. the effort of setting up a PayPal account and linking it to their, their BP app when you could just enable mobile wallets? I I, yeah. I don't know. Um, but Ex Exxon Mobile has been the best. Um, if you are in the southeast, Sunoco right. works with it. And those are about the only ones I know. Uh, primarily, uh, southeast is also, you know, Exxon. Exxon Mobile is, is primarily found in the south. Mobile's found up here in the north. Uh, you'll find Exxon again further north yep. uh, from us here. Um, but that seems to be the one that works the best. And ever, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jinx it. But ever since I switched to using mobile payments at the pump, mm -hmm. at mobile, or Shell is the other one that works with it now. They didn't before. Um, have not had our card numbers wiped yet. That's great. Which is great. Uh, I'm very happy about that. But, I mean, I think I just like, I just more so just reading through this article and then just thinking about the future. Where, where's the future of, of mobile going to be? Um, they, they put a funny analogy about, if you remember that Seinfeld episode with George Costanza when he had his big wallet and he had to, <laughs> yeah. uh, he, he, he's opening up that wallet and he's like, he's got it, 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 it with two hands trying to put that next receipt inside his wallet. Well, apparently uh, uh, the guy who wrote that uh, uh, Seinfeld episode said, he said that the wallets are over. And that was back in 1997. Isn't that amazing? And he said that. So um, Jerry Jerry Seinfeld, of course, disagreed, um, and uh, and that's what they, that, this kind of inspired this whole thing <laughs> for, uh, when they did that. So, but yeah, Grant and I mean, a lot of people don't like to carry around their wallets all the time, um, but it's just come to this day. I mean, it's getting to the point though. Do I even need to carry around many of if any of my credit cards? I mean, maybe one or two, if I need to, just to, just in case. But uh, I carry them anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's easy enough to report a card stolen or whatnot if I lose my wallet, but I carry them anyway simply because not every place does take mobile payments through, through right. a digital wallet. Um, oddly, many of the apps that I have on my phone that should support Apple Wallet don't. Uh, the only hotel, for example, that supports Apple Wallet is IHG, which is Holiday Inn. Um, but the others... Uh, Best Western doesn't support it. Uh, La Quinta doesn't support it. You know, many of these apps, and the the difference seems to be the type of app that they, that they develop. If it's an app developed specifically for iOS, great. If it's a wrapper around a website, yep. they more often than not do not support it. And uh, both Best Western and La Quinta are, are wrappers. You yep. can tell. Yep. Um, so the only cards I have in here, IHG, Dunkin' Donuts. That's important. <laughs> it, 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 it is important. Yeah. I don't use it anywhere near. I still have a balance on it. Yeah. Um, Walgreens, Starbucks, yep. Jimmy John's, uh, 7-Eleven, and that's only because that's a mobile Exxon by my house. Right. And uh, this is the important one. This is the most important one, my Lego VIP card. All right. That is important. That is super important. Now, one that did support it that I was very, very happy about was when I went to go get my COVID vaccination. Yeah. Uh, I was able to take my vaccination reservation and put it into my Apple wallet. And it, that made me very, very happy because I didn't yeah. have to worry about printing out the, the yeah, uh, reservation I, and carrying it with me and, that. and all that kind of stuff. So that was fantastic. Um, but other than that, yeah, the one thing I don't use is I don't use Apple Pay Cash. I do uh, because I have an Apple card. So, I mean, that's that's one of the perks to having the Apple Card is getting that 2 and 3% uh, cash back uh, each time you charge something on the Apple Card. So, uh, and I've got I've got some bills, like my T-Mobile bill, they'll, they'll, they take Apple Pay, so I get 3% or whatever the balance of my, my, uh, current, my, uh, my uh, bill is. So, all that cash goes into the, into the cash card. So Well, anyone who knows me or has known me for any, <laughs> any length of time <laughs> is going to know what rewards card i use and i'm going to show Dave. disney i already didn't have, you don't have to show it to me <laughs> i we earn, know, we I know earn disney. disney dollars with mine i don't care about airline miles no. i don't care about money good towards a new mac 
I want my Disney dollars, uh, gosh darn it. I know. And that's what I get. So I we earn Disney dollars. So, we just call it earning Disney dollars. Anytime we buy something for the house, well, we just earned another Disney dollar. Yeah, you ready know. for the next vacation. It is. It, it literally is. And it adds so, up so incredibly quickly, too. Uh, so, yeah, uh, uh, I'll link in the show notes for that article as well as uh, uh, I hope that that was a good uh, review of all that. So last topic I wanted to touch upon was... Um, Let's, getting ready for iOS 15. iOS 15, iPad OS 15 is coming out uh, pretty soon here as we record this. So uh, probably days away. We're not sure. I mean, Apple hasn't really announced their event yet, or, or announced or, as far yet. as we don't, as far as we know. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about: Are you going to get ready for it? Um, because uh, it's uh, uh, it's really uh, it's really coming soon. And I know you're not. I know, Mike, you're not always the early adopter. Whenever the new version comes out, you kind of wait for a bit, if, if I remember correctly. Uh, but at least a point version. At least a point. I, I, yeah. Well, I, I'm jumping on it a little bit more quickly now these days. I'm a little concerned about notes and reminders. No. Um, I use notes fairly heavily. And I don't use reminders that much. Mm -hmm. uh, I do use them, but not that much. But I am concerned about notes because Apple is changing the format once again, like they did with reminders a couple of years ago. Right. And my biggest concern with that is that most of my Macs can't be upgraded to Monterey. Right. So I'm a little leery of what, what's going to happen with my notes. I, I presume they're going to do what they did with reminders, and that is they'll still sync nicely as long as I don't upgrade my notes database, yeah. uh, which I've been avoiding upgrading my reminders database for a couple of years now. Right, right. Uh, so I don't know how long I'll be able to do that with reminders. I don't know what will happen with Apple Notes. But I have been looking at other solutions just in case I need to make the jump to something different that does work with all my devices. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I've, been, I've been a little quicker on updating iOS. Um, usually it's okay. Usually it works okay. Yeah. Um, the, you know, like I said, unfortunately I haven't been able to update all my Macs. Uh, in fact, as of Monterey, this one that's sitting in front of me right now, my MacBook Pro, uh, 2018 MacBook Pro, is the only Mac I have that I can upgrade to Monterey. Oh, okay. I had two or three before sure. uh, that could upgrade to um, Big Sur. Um, but now Monterey, I, I have one. So yep. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, we'll see. Um, so as far as devices, uh, Apple's been pretty awesome allowing, especially iPhone, um, allowing yeah. to, to have older devices available to still upgrade. They go all the way back to the, the first generation SE as well as the 6S and 6S Plus. Uh, that's pretty phenomenal. Those are five, six, seven-year-old devices. Some that old are, phones. Yeah. They're gonna. I mean, they're gonna work, but you have to expect that some of the uh, it's gonna be the limitations, like the the live text we've talked about. And we'll be do, believe me, we'll be doing lots of reviews of uh, all the new features coming once once it's out in the wild, and everybody is going to start appreciating that. But uh, there are just gonna be some um, some items that will not work, even though it is upgradable to iOS 15. And as far as iPads go, you got uh, all the Pro-Line models all the way up down to the iPad Pro 9.7 inch. Uh, you go all the way down to the fifth generation of the iPad. Um, so anything below below the fifth gen is, uh, is going to be uh, uh, out. Uh, the iPad Mini 4 is going to be the only of the minis. I mean, but there's also a rumor of a new mini coming out here pretty soon, so we don't know. Um, and then the iPad Airs, uh, the only the the fourth and third generation, as well as the iPad Air 2. So they've they've uh, they've sunsetted a lot of the older iPads. Uh, uh, so that so you have to be aware of that if whichever iPad you happen to have, it's going to take you know it's going to be end of the road and, and eventually going to become obsolete. It's good for you know some things, but but you, you know you got to start thinking about upgrading at that point. So yeah. Um, but uh, Apple says that they're going to give they're going to give you the option that you could stay with iOS 14 for the you know, for the duration for the for the future if you want to. They're not going to force it because you know how they've always the, the the update always ends up there with you got that red, that number one red uh, uh, notification in the settings telling you that you got an update and uh, they're not going to force it uh, at least not not at right away. Well, I do disable that feature. I disable automatic updates. Yeah, you turn off the automatic updates, but it's still going to. It still, it still alerts up, you. And, and alerts you, and, yeah, yeah it, and, and wants to download it, too, and, and, and have it ready. 
Um, so, but they're, I, I think they're going to be a little more uh, open to, for you to decide whether you want to upgrade or not. So, an iOS 14 is going to be around for a while. I mean, you still got devices out there, and they're still updating to iOS 12. I mean, the devices that are <laughs> older devices yeah, don't don't run, true. And, and they're still upgrading them to uh, um, um, to. to point updates for for security so i mean i i i i applaud apple for doing that because people still are you know there are people out there who are fine with what they have and and that's fine um so that's out there so um so first thing you want to do when you are going to do an update you want to make sure you're updating all your apps and making sure you have enough free space if you have a if you have an iphone it's got limited on space some people still have those 16 and 32 gig models the space runs out pretty quickly um so you got to you know be yeah uh, you gotta you gotta be uh be aware of that and then uh, making a backup obviously i'm hoping everybody's backing up at least through icloud and if, or or if you decide you want to ba- manually back up you can you can you can back it up through um well now it's through finder through uh, uh on, on the later versions of mac uh but or as itunes before that of course um and uh, make sure you have your passwords yeah that's important too because something could once it upgrades you might want to you might be a little bit of a worry about uh, you may not have your passwords. Use a password manager like One Password um, and have all your passwords uh, saved. Um, so it's uh, very important. So uh, we're hoping it's going to be coming out soon. Um, and uh, I don't know if you have anything else to add as far as uh, iOS 15 and being ready for upgrading. O- o- only one thing. If you are going to use One Password, make sure that the only device that you're running it on is not your iPhone, that you also have it running on your Mac. Right. Let me let me restate that, that you also have it on your Mac, that if you have a subscription, you know how to get into it on the web, because if the only place it's running is on your iPhone, and your iPhone is rebooting after an update, and it's prompting for you to log in, yep. you need a place to get that password if you don't know it. That's right. And if we're following modern security recommendations it's going to be a complex password yep so just make sure you have another place to get to those passwords besides on your phone i have run across some folks who only store their passwords on their phone and that can be that can be problematic sometimes i mean they use icloud keychain Uh, they might be storing in there but at least that syncs across all your devices it does yeah that's the good news about that so try that so all right, boy, we've come clo- towards the end of this episode, and uh, b- before we wrap up, I wanted to, you to tell everybody how they can be able to go see Mac Stock virtually or uh, come in person, because you still have still an opportunity as we record this to, to come out and see the show in person if you want to. You know, there, there is still an opportunity to come out in person. Um, I, I think most people should probably attend virtually at this point, if I'm being honest. Um, yep. You know, we're trying to keep the audience sure. small. Uh, we're trying to keep everybody safe. We're trying to allow everybody to properly socially distance. So um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to encourage okay. you know, people to, to fill up. But there is still a little bit of room. Uh, that, and if anybody would like to purchase a ticket, you can still get them. Uh, just go to max.conference.com or max.conferenceandexpo.com and click on the virtual Max Doc button, and you can learn how to get that VIP pass. Um, now, we also have the free sign-up, which is uh, anyone can attend and uh, take part in it during Virtual Max Doc live uh, throughout the day from <laughs> 11 to 5. And then uh, you can network with people in the, in the Virtual Max Doc lounge. Uh, you can join us in the chat rooms, which are going to be Discord chat rooms. Discord, right. Um, yep. And then uh, we also have a digital pass. If you can't join in live throughout the day on September 25th, um, did we mention the date? September 25th. December, se- September, uh, September 3rd, 25th. No, well, I said December. September. <laughs> September 25th. September yes. 25th. Jeez Louise. 2020. I want it to be December. I think that's the, <laughs> I think that's the problem. September 25th. I'll say it again, September. September. uh, 2021. And uh, if you can't join us live that day, I do offer a digital pass as well. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talks will be available for uh, basically time-shifted viewing. uh, And and that's available too. And anybody can sign up for that. And you can sign up for that even after Virtual Max Doc is over. Um, But yeah, if you'd like to join us in person, um, uh, you should be aware 
that uh, COVID policies will be in effect. Right. And we do require everybody to have proof of vaccination. And uh, we are going to require everybody have a mask as well. Absolutely. Um, but you are, are welcome to sign up. And we do still have a few slots open for that as well. Great. All right. Well, we've wrapped up the show for this week. Um, I will go ahead and wrap us up. Uh, this is a wrap. That's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at InTouchWithIOS.com. You can, fi- you can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. You can go to our YouTube page, YouTube.com slash DaveG65. Uh, you, uh, you can also subscribe to us in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others. But better yet, go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. We're also on Flipboard. They're going to have to have a link for our Flipboard magazine. In Touch with iOS magazine is out there as well. Uh, and I want to thank Mike Potter. Thank you so much for being here. We had a blast uh, being in person for the first time in quite a long time. Quite a long time. And enjoyed this beautiful atmosphere looking at our, our lakeshore here. And uh, let everybody know where they can find you. Well, you can find me sitting here at the side of a lake <laughs> in Wonder Lake, Illinois. Uh, but only for probably the next half hour or so. Yes. Um, other than that, you can find me at max.conference.com or max.conferenceandexpo.com. You can find me at max.expo on Twitter. And uh, where else can people find me? <laughs> for maceyesonly.com. Yes. Uh, my occasional podcast for the Apple community can be found <laughs> there as well. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Thanks, thanks again for being here, Mike. We appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy. Everybody enjoyed the the, the show. We enjoyed doing it, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, we'll talk again soon. <laughs> <laughs>